In this video I'm gonna install more Arcadia T5 and LED bars and I'm gonna take you along so you know how to do it. Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Uh, sometimes get the question how I mount my Arcadia uh, Pro T5 kit and the LED bars and also in comparison to each other. And I actually needed to replace the light above my Lantanota setup. So that's what we're going to do in this video and I'm going to take you along and give you some tips to explain. Now the reason I needed to exchange the light above my setup is because previously above this Lantanota setup there was a 34 watt 6% high output T5 Pro kit by Arcadia. Man, it's a mouthful. Anyway, there was this big bar, it was 90 centimeters long above this 120 centimeter setup, and that has never caused a problem with my other animals, but with these, it seemed it did because they actually got some skin issues. This is a problem you see more often. Of course, I had them without these problems for many, many years. And the problem started when I put them in this setup. Now the problem could be either caused by two things. And that is the high amount of minerals in my water. Now how is that different compared to my other setups? In these setups, as they are with my turtles, I often clean them on the same regime as my turtles. Which is, yeah, quite a lot. And there's a lot of minerals in my tap water so every time i clean i add minerals to the setup now the lantanotus as you can see always have their nose or the upper part of their head sticking out of the water as you can also see with that one and you can imagine that if i have a lot of minerals in the water the water evaporates around the first part of their head and it then attaches around the skin of the lant notes and this is a problem yeah that you see more often so it could be just the higher amount of minerals and a bit higher amount of pH so the pH in a natural range is pretty much neutral around 7 the pH of my tap water is 7.6 so that is quite a high amount higher because the difference between 7 and 7.6 is actually uh, quite big so it could be that problem so what I did is I added a lot of tannins as you can see at the color of the water I stopped changing with my tap water and now I only uh, yeah add osmosis water if I need to because of evaporation and of course I also have the filtration system that I do clean out about once a week but that way I don't add minerals constantly while cleaning so I have cut back on the amount of cleaning and it's funny because I had a friend that had skin issues with his and I said the same stop cleaning the water so often and that's what I started doing myself when I had them in the turtle room and this is the result some other people also have seen these problems when they added UV and although I checked out the amount of UV these bars give off at the distance I have them now and the Ferguson zone should be correct I just want to make sure that that is also not something that is causing this problem it looks worse than it is because they're actually shedding underneath there they're looking a lot better already so yeah that's the reason I'm going to exchange that bar for the shade dweller because the amount of UV this shade dweller gives off is a lot lower and also the shade dweller is smaller so I have a more select area where there is UV in case they want to bask under the UV or utilize that and then they're going to have the LED bar for more ambient lighting or more natural light above the setup so looks worse than it is but it is a skin issue that you see a bit more often with the lantanotus but also with other aquatic snakes and they sometimes get fungal issues because the water the pH is not too high but because this is only around the face and the face is the only part sticking out of the water it could be that either that part is exposed a bit more to UV or because the minerals there it is are setting off because of evaporation around their head okay and now I'm really gonna get started 
Now, I'm a big fan of the Pro T5 kit. The only thing I dislike about them is the way they're mounted. They're mounted on these small clips and they hold on very well, which is good, I guess, because if you have them in the setup with your animals, you're pretty sure they won't come down falling on your animals or breaking or whatever. But if you want to take them off, you do need to use some force. Like that. So these are the small clips the fixtures are mounted with. Very simple, you just use one screw and it fixes in between here. And believe me, these hold on. It's incredible how well these hold on. Sometimes too well, as I mentioned. First I'm going to install the Shade Dweller. This is it. As you can see, it's a pretty small, nice fixture at about 30 centimeters long. It's uh, 4 centimeters high, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. And through these, I can easily connect them with the rest of all my Pro T5 kits. So it works absolutely great. So yeah, very simple fixture. The clips are already in, so I'm going to put it around there. Okay, now I'm going to install the LED bar. As you can see, I went for the 45 centimeters. I could have gone bigger, but these animals come from areas that are not brightly lit, you know, they mostly live in small streams in very thick vegetated forests. So the amount of light that reaches the animals actually is relatively low compared to that of some of my turtles that are basking in the sun and etc. So that's why I went for only this, so again they can get away from the light if they want. So yeah, that's something you want to think about and uh, something I did want to mention. So I'm going to fix this one, yeah, about over here. When you get these bars, you get this additional connector. So with this connector, you can actually connect all the pro kits or the LED bars. So this is how the view looks with only a 13 watts Jungle Dawn compact light. So this is the setup with only the Shade Dweller and the 13 watt Jungle Dawn compact light. As you can see, although it needs to start up, of course, Shade Dweller doesn't produce too much light, so that's why you always need to combine it with another source of visual light as the LED bar. Now the LED bar makes the obvious difference. Look at that, that nice spread of visual light. So this is how it looks now. As you can see, the amount of UV above the setup is way more central in one part, so the animals can actually get away from it whenever they knew it to. So they can choose whether they want to be exposed to UV or not. As you can see, I have the LED bar next to it. So that way, in this spot, the UV light and visual light are combined. The same as you would get from, well, the sun. Still, the animals can always get away from the UV and still expose themselves to visual light if they want to. Now these lanternodes are probably not going to do that, but I definitely am glad I did this because now the animals have an option if they want to be exposed to UV or not. And that is definitely in this case an upgrade. So I downgraded the UV, but upgraded the amount of choice for my animals. As you can see here, over here I installed the UV, the basking side and the LED all side to side or in segments almost as you can see so this way on the basking area all this light infrared from the basking light uv from the t5 and the visual light from the led bar is all combined and then then if they want to move away from the heat they can but they still have the visual light and even a bit of uv as you can see i have UV pretty much all over the setup and for these animals that's actually great. So if you are gonna mount lights above your own setup and you wanna create the perfect basking spot with visual light, UV and of course infrared, then this is the setup or the configuration you want to choose. Make sure you combine them all and do not have them side to side. 
Okay, bit of a hectic video. I hope you was able to get along there. But at least I'm super glad I did this. And I hopefully also gave you an idea how you want to install your heating lamps, your LED bars and your UV lights when you're going to choose to go for a setup like this. As you can see, now the animals can actually choose. I'm super curious to see the results. Again, I don't think the UV was the actual problem. But just to be sure... I fixed it and of course also the mineral count in my water will go down. As mentioned I installed a missing system a while ago and it does seem to have some positive results because I have seen actually some matings lately so that's super super cool. I really hope for some positive results but first I want to make sure that the animals are yeah, doing well and those skin issues are resolved. So thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope to see you in the next one. I'm going to try to do some more videos in the upcoming weeks. but. These are busy times, so I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah.